Ah, uh, it is guest blade time on the Apostle P channel. Another one of these cardboard tube housed traditional beauties from Great Eastern Cutlery. Stick with me guys, we'll open this up and see what's inside. gang Rob here it is the evening of 2 April 2014 and yeah we do have a guest blade uh, in the house tonight this one's sent in by my YouTube subscriber George spells it Jorge uh, George is of Latino origins and has been here long enough he's used to be uh, used to being called George so we will roll with that he explained that to me in his letter that he sent with a knife uh, the reason I have this knife is because George contacted me, oh gosh, a week or so ago. And uh, he knows that I do my sharpening mostly on the Edge Pro Apex. And he is a, a former user of the Edge Pro and had purchased for it while he was using it some uh, pretty high-end Chosera stones. And that's these guys right here and has since switched to the Wicked Edge, I believe. So these were just kind of taking up space and he asked me if I'd like to try them. So I said, yeah. So he sent these to me and uh, along with it, uh, he asked if I would like to review or at least give an overview of this little beauty from Great Eastern Cutlery. So let's see. Uh, Let's see what we got here, and it is a beauty. I just love these uh, these cardboard tube packages. Let's take a look at what we got here. It says Sawyer Barlow, genuine Barlow, carbon steel, 1095, Tidyute Cutlery, and it's a special factory order, SFO, by Charlie Campagna. Pretty cool. There's a, what, Tom and Huck there getting ready to whitewash the fence, I believe. And these are known in the Great Eastern Cutlery line as the Tom's Choice Barlow. It's made in the number 15 pattern, the boy's knife pattern. So it's kind of a, a smaller Barlow. And let's, uh, let's crack open the tube here. Let's see if my, uh, let's see if my number 47 Viper can double as a tube popper. I think it well look at that <clears throat> one of my instagram buddies uh turned me on to this i mentioned something about needing a tube popper the other day and he said you know what just close your knife slip it into the lid and the groove where the blade rides fits that little tab perfectly and out she comes works great just about any knife will do it <clears throat> now i gotta tell you as i open the contents of the package there's some extra packaging in here just for shipment George included a little paper towel but this is kind of neat we're just going to see how these come paper towel not included they come just nicely wrapped in a piece of wax paper which is great because it's got some preserving properties and it doesn't disintegrate when you roll it up and unroll it just a great, better than tissue paper. It's a lot more sturdy. And here's the knife. You know what? I didn't get this out and polish it before I did the video. Well, let's, uh, let's get some of the fingerprints off this thing. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. So we can do a proper unveil <laughs> of this great little knife. Okay. Here it is. Classic Barlow. And we don't need to go into, again, the long storied and rather complicated history of the Barlow knife. Basically, the Barlow is a traditional slip joint 
bolstered on one end, the pivot end only, and the bolster is huge. And that's the, the most identifiable characteristic of a Barlow is going to be that oversized bolster. And it, it is that way for strength. You know, there's one large rivet that goes through the pivot of the knife. And then generally, back in this area, just above the groove on this one, will be another huge rivet, uh, giving the knife lots of stability. You know, the, the pivot rivet goes all the way through from one side of the knife to the other. And then each bolster is then riveted to the liner uh, for added rigidity and <clears throat> rigid they are. I'm going to get the tube out of here now just so my camera doesn't focus on it. And this uh, this particular Tom's Choice Barlow has the Gabon ebony covers and they are sort of saw cut. I don't know if I can pick this up in the light but notice that the, the profile of these covers is dead flat with a bit of a chamfer and then that chamfer sort of changes profile as we roll into that round around the butt. <clears throat> Bolsters on this knife are nickel silver as are the rivets. Just beautiful transitions. Really good. How's our blade centering look? <laughs> I can't really see. There. Not too bad, huh? Pretty darn good. Just beautiful. Kind of a smallish knife, as I said. The handle on this Barlow is only three and a half inches long. Blade length? I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, let's get a quick measurement. Okay. You guys can find out with me. How's that? We'll put the tip on the 4-inch mark. And it looks like... Not quite... 2 and 3 quarters... So we'll say it's 2 and 11 sixteenths inch long. <clears throat> In this particular Tom's Choice Barlow, it's a spear point blade, kind of looks like a very large pen blade. Uh, these are also available in sort of a trapper configuration uh, with a drop point and a spade blade. There are some clip point Tom's Choice Barlows. I don't know exactly how many varieties have been produced over the years, but these current ones are being made in a drop point, which is kind of cool. And then uh, we've got some laser etching. Which is actually kind of uh, interesting. This, uh, this Tom's Choice Barlow is one of the Tidu cutlery line of Great Eastern Cutlery Knives. So that means 1095 steel, but satin finished, as you can see. And most of the Tidu line don't come with laser etching on the blade, but these SFOs are special factory orders. Sometimes they're a little different as you see also with the grooved bolsters, not normally seen on the Tidu line. So the SFOs are just a little different. Superb walk and talk. And you know what, for a very smallish pocket knife, what a strong little blade. There is not a hint of side to side play. In fact, very little flex even. Just super strong feeling knife. How usable is that pattern, huh? Strong, small, great utility with that spear blade. Full flat ground. Very thin behind the edge. Let's see how our uh, half stop's looking. Our back spring is just ever so slightly proud in the half stop position. Don't know if you guys can see that. When we're open, we're dead flush. When we're closed, we're dead flush. So, just a little bit off at the half stop, but that's not a big deal. 
<clears throat> one thing George wanted me to do was uh, examine his edge and he sharpened this one kind of like I do um, 18 degrees all to the edge no micro bevel he did this on his wicked edge and you're going to notice as with pretty much all GEC spear points the blade does thicken as we come to the tip so you'll see the breadth of the uh, the edge bevel increase as we get to the tip looks like George did a pretty darn good job huh he didn't over sharpen at the base of the edge which frankly sometimes is a fault of mine there is a a very slight sharpening notch as you can see and you don't want to eat that up in the first sharpening and George did a good job staying away from that he, it looks like he could have spent just a little more time at the base of the edge though his uh, edge bevel is pretty narrow right back here I can understand why though it's definitely sharp all the way to the back though I'll tell you what pretty nice fellas we got to see don't we I don't think George has got anything to apologize for here let's get some paper guys I just made a huge mess <clears throat> okay a little Nacho Shooter Supply catalog out and I'll do my best Let's let the knife do its part. Oh yeah. Ooh. George. Nicely done, my friend. Let's see if we can do a little S-curve here. It's probably more me than the knife, guys. Yeah. Dog will hunt. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys uh, can fully appreciate <laughs> how hard it is to put a, a really good edge on these knives. And not because the steel is hard to sharpen, but because the knives are so thin behind the edge. It, you can go from uh, not quite sharp to taking off too much material in the blink of an eye. George has done a great job of conserving metal on this knife. And it's really sharp and it looks awesome. So great job, George. Now these Tom Choice, Tom's Choice Barlows in <clears throat> what I would call common materials, the woods, <clears throat> the bones. They're going to run right around $100 depending on wh which website you find them on and uh, exactly what material you have. But, you know, plus or minus 10 bucks. That's how much they're going to be. If you get into the more exotic materials like the uh, primitive bone, I don't know if they even make those, or uh, uh, if you found one in mammoth ivory or something, they'd be more. You know, for a three and a half inch, single bladed traditional from GEC you know that is maybe you know 20 bucks more than most of them that you'll see but these are kind of rare they're they, they do them in limited production runs you never quite know when they're going to make them except they do a great job at GEC of keeping us posted on what's coming up um, man great walk and talk just I don't know if the if the special factory orders have a little more ad attention to detail than most of the other GEC stuff, but the spring tension is just perfect. You know, uh, if you watch a lot of reviews on Great Eastern Cutlery Knives, you'll notice that one of the things guys ding them for a little bit is overly strong back springs. Um, now this is a boy's knife. Maybe that has something to do with why it's a little bit more relaxed. But just a pleasure to use, and the action you know we don't talk about action on traditional knives very much but it is absolute butter no grittiness whatsoever I mean just amazing which tells me that the interior of this knife 
must be very highly finished. Let's see if I can get you guys a peek in here. Yeah, look at that. And the blade tang as well. Very nicely finished. What a sweetie. Easy little one-handed closer. If I can get my middle finger out of the way. Let's see how it does at the half stop. Oh yeah. That guys is a great little pocket knife. Awesome little blade. You just can't stop opening it and closing it. Just great in hand. You know the the Barlows are. A little larger at the butt end than they are at the pivot end. Just it gives your hand a very positive feel at the back of the knife. Just gives you all kinds of stability in your grip. Yeah, just not, there's not a grip this knife doesn't like. Kind of reminds me. <clears throat> We've got all these modern knives, the you know tactical blades with CNC machine handles with finger grooves in them and contours, and you don't think you don't think sometimes of how ergonomic some of these traditionals are. If you notice where the where the bolster meets the the blade tang, you've got just like a little finger choil here. And your index finger just finds that, rests right against that little bump. You've heard me say this before, guys, but God made the human hand to hold on to a stick. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sticks don't have finger grooves and uh, 3D machined CNC scales. And this little stick does just fine in hand. That ebony wood is absolutely gorgeous. It really complements the knife. The, the engraving in the nickel silver bolsters has got sort of a black cast in the base of the engraving. It just goes beautifully with that ebony. The nail neck nicely blackened. Easy to do on the 1095 blades. Hmm. How good, and you guys who know me, you know I'm not a big patina guy, but how good would that 1095 blade look with a little honestly earned patina? <laughs> if it were mine, it would never see it unless I made a mistake, I gotta admit. But it would look good, wouldn't it? <clears throat> well, this one will be... Uh, be heading back home tomorrow or Friday if I can make myself part with it. By the way, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a link to George's channel uh, up here in the corner if you're watching this on a desktop or a laptop where you can see annotations. I'll also put his channel down in the description. Check him out. He's uh, just sort of getting started in this YouTube thing and and. Uh, some support and some new subs would be nice for George. Pretty, uh, pretty skilled knife hobbyist, I would say. He's got great taste and his sharpening skills are mad. That's all for tonight, guys. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and Jorge's Tom's Choice Barlow are sharp. Have a good night, guys.